Number 44. For the human body, what is the rate of heat transfer by conduction through the body's tissue with the following conditions? The tissue thickness is 3 centimeters, change in temperature is 2, the skin area is 1.5 meters squared. Okay, so conduction formula right over here. We're talking about the rate of conduction. That's the Q over T. That's essentially the same as power. We've seen this many times before. So this is equal to then, I'm just going to start plugging in the values. The K value here, you have to look that up. That's the, I'm just going to use the K for body fat. All right, that's about 0.2. They don't tell us what type of tissue, so I'm just going to use that as the number. The area is going to be 1.5 meters square, so that's the right units. The change in temperature is going to be 2 degrees, and then divided by the thickness we have here, it says 3 uh, centimeters, but you know that we need that in meters, so just divide that by 100.03, and just simply calculate. All right, this one's fairly straightforward. So there's going to be 0.2 times 1.5 times 2 divided by 0.03. And that's 20, right? So basically this is 20 watts. And 20 watts is equivalent to joules per second, right? So it's 20 joules every second. The body is dissipating um, uh, this amount of heat. And then the second part, what does it say? It says, how does this compare with the average heat transfer rate to the body resulting from an energy intake of about 2,400 calories per day? All right. So basically, why don't we figure out uh, you know, how many kilo, uh, how many maybe kilojoules this is, or we can figure, you know, why don't we just figure out how many joules that is. So let's do that first. So we have 2,400 kilocalories per day. And I just want to figure out how many joules that is per day. So one kilocalorie is equal to 4,184 joules. And we just have to multiply. So 2,400 times 4,184 and that's about going to be about one, I'm going to just round here, this is so close. It's going to be about one times 10 to the, what is that, three, six, seven. So it's about 10,000 uh, joules, okay. And then uh, we have now, uh, that's how many joules per day, right? That's per day. And now why don't we, we know the joules per second here, so why don't we convert that into joules per day? So basically all we have to do is just take that value Multiply it then by seconds on the top, hours on the bottom. Well, yeah, I'll do the hours first. So there's 3,600 seconds in one hour. And so the seconds would have canceled. And then hour to day, there's 24 hours in a day. So the hours would have canceled, right? Leaving me with my answer. So let's do 20 multiplied by 3,600 multiplied by 24. And here we have about uh, 1.7. 1.7 or so, 1.7 times 10 looks like to the sixth, right? Three, six. And that's in joules per day now. All right, so then it says, how does this compare? Well, it appears that we're taking in, this is the amount of energy that we're taking in per day, this is the amount that we are transferring via conduction, so just you can do a division, so one times 10 to the seven divided by then that value of 1.7 times 10 to the sixth. So realize we consume about, on average, 5.8 times uh, more energy, or in other words, there's 5.8 times more energy um, basically uh, conducted through the food that we intake relative to the amount of energy that we are uh, expending, right? Uh, that would be, you know, the energy that we intake is not only going uh, to maintain the body temperature and then to actually release temperature, it's kind of, it's kind of like waste heat, just like an engine, uh, but the remaining amount of that energy is going to power cellular processes, right? You remember all that ATP stuff if you've taken bio and fizz. All right. So, guys, thanks for tuning in. Please remember to subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Take care.